Tesco said its meal deal is going up by 40p. And I want you to know how sad I am to be giving up the best job in the world. Protesting against the inaction in tackling the cost of living crisis. What was the top G? We have the guide. Abolish the monarchy. Buckingham Palace has announced the death of Queen Elizabeth II. 45p tax cut, gone. Now the British pound has fallen to its lowest level ever. Economic credibility, gone. gone. Inflation in the United Kingdom has surged to a new 40-year high. The honourable gentleman has no idea. Hard times are here. The UK has well and truly fell off. And I'm not just on about the price of Tesco meal deals. The country is in its worst state ever in respect to modern history. Everything is significantly more expensive with people's incomes being cut and their money being worth less and less. Homelessness, debts, and the demand for food banks have all increased. And realistically, no one's going to flex that they're British. But I guess this is all fine because someone worth near a billion pounds understands our financial struggles. Yeah, yeah I'm a coke oh. addict, oh, oh, a total coke addict. addict. The United Kingdom is the least united it's ever been. And this likely won't change anytime soon. For you to truly understand the point I'm making, we have to look back, all the way back to 2007. Just 15 years ago, the UK was one of the world's strongest economies. At least, that's what my research tells me. I was probably just playing on my DS at the time. The country was very reputable, with its prosperity being envied across the globe. If you go back and look at economic reports from this time, you'll see that the UK economy was predicted to grow at 3% per year, reinforcing its place as the country with the strongest economic growth within the G7, with one pound being worth $2. However, all of this was short-lived, Banks across the world were starting to struggle due to not being fully sensible with their money. This caused public outrage and was only a hint for what was to come in 2008. Hello and welcome. Thousands of Northern Rock savers have queued for hours at branches to empty their accounts. Turmoil on the world's markets after the collapse of the giant investment bank Lehman Brothers sent shockwaves around the globe. OK, there's been a financial crisis. So what exactly is happening to Northern Rock's deposits? Is it the first time you've heard of it? So banks started lending money they hadn't got to other banks that gave the non-existent money to people who couldn't pay it back. And now as a result of that, your cars are all worthless. In short, banks were being too generous in taking on loans they couldn't afford and giving out money they did not have, alongside authorising mortgages for people that really could not afford to pay them back. This, in conjunction with the poor state of the Labour government at the time, led to the UK taxpayer having to pay all the billions that were lost by British bank Northern Rock. This large bank was then acquired by a virgin who owns Virgin. This whole fiasco only increased the already accelerating debt of the country. This wasn't too bad, as similar effects were seen in many other G7 nations. The UK would then embark on a journey to recover from this, with the first step being to get new leadership, which came in the form of David Cameron, leader of the Conservative Party. In trying to reduce the debts, the country was plunged into austerity, which in short means public services such as policing, libraries, schools and hospitals were drastically cut, whilst taxes were increased. This ever worsening situation for British people drew more and more attention to whether the country should remain in or leave the European Union. Voting for Brexit against the wishes of London and the old political establishment. Can you trace all of that back to Northern Rock? Yes, I think you can. Before a Brexit referendum could even take place, something more drastic within the UK was on the rise. Should Scotland be an independent country? We can take matters into Scottish hands. So this is our message to the people of Scotland. If you don't like me, I won't be here forever. We want you to stay. Head, heart and soul, we want you to stay. First time in modern history, London could be at risk of losing control of Scotland. It could become its own country. Vote to save our United Kingdom. Scotland was nearly no longer part of the UK 
when they held a referendum on independence, leaving the country's future in the hands of the Scottish people, who ultimately decided to stay, but only with a slight majority. It would have broken my heart to see our United Kingdom come to an end. A big factor for this was because Scots believed the UK would remain within the EU, and as we would find out in 2016, this would not be the case. This is the single most important political decision any of us will make in our lifetime. Every continent now is outgrowing Europe. Certainly it is not in our economic interests to remain within the European Union. No way. So the British people had another thing to vote on. That being Brexit. And I will go to Parliament and propose that the British people decide our future in Europe. This does not mean <laughs> that the United Kingdom will be in any way less united. Ultimately, Brexit won, but only with a slight majority. So now the UK was more divided than ever, and David Cameron, real life rage quit after losing. People have made a very clear decision to take a different path. And as such, I think the country requires fresh leadership to take it in this direction. The Brexit vote was very much based on false information incorrect figures, like how many British people live in Europe, and how much money we pay to the European Union. In fact, many Brits did not even know what the European Union was. However, above all of this, the bigger issue started to become more apparent. The people of Scotland and Northern Ireland predominantly voted to remain within the European Union, and this is the first time we really see the United Kingdom be ununited. Brexit didn't really happen, and it still really hasn't took full effect. The new leader, Theresa May, was not strong and stable, like she claimed. Yes, uh, and you know what? This is strong and stable, strong and stable, strong and stable, strong and stable. Theresa May wouldn't do anything really to reduce the debts of the country, and her bills for Brexit would constantly fail and not go through the House of Commons. As a result of this, she rage quit and resigned. I will shortly leave the job that it has been the honour of my life to hold. With May gone, she made plenty of room for Boris Johnson. And as someone who went to Oxford, they must have a really good vocabulary and uh, really be able to save the country, right? Uh, as, as we all must, uh, 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 to, to Peppa Pig world. As much as people had had enough of hearing about Brexit, if nothing got in the way of the UK for the next decade or so, it seemed like it could actually pay off. The country was set to leave the EU officially in early 2020 but little did anyone know what that year would entail. The coronavirus is the biggest to fight the cause of the mysterious new virus. Coronavirus. Coronavirus. There are fears a rapidly spreading virus has reached Australia. There was a small thing, I don't know if you heard of it, it was like this global pandemic or something. Coronavirus, it was, I don't know. You might not have heard of it, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail. Everyone in the UK was set to face the biggest threat this country has faced for decades alongside the rest of the world. But maybe it was significantly worse for the UK because we had the buffoon of Boris Johnson to govern us. Two times happy birthday. I think there were, a few, there were actually a few coronavirus uh, patients and I shook hands with everybody. Prime Minister Boris Johnson has tested positive for coronavirus. As a result of people not going to work, shops being closed, and people not having money to spend, we saw global economies collapse, which would only go on to increase the UK's metric tonne of debt. The British people soon became unhappy with how the government were dealing with this pandemic. To stay at home, protect, protect our NHS, NHS and save us. Right. To what felt like one rule for some, a different rule for others, where ministers would go against their own guidelines. This creating even further divide within the United Kingdom. However, this already separated, collapsing nation was about to get a massive wake-up call. Following events over thousands of miles away in the United States. A white police officer was seen kneeling on Mr. Floyd's neck as he was pinned to the ground. He repeatedly cried, I can't breathe. The UK would be heavily challenged, as millions of people would protest against inequality to minorities within the country. And this is as it should be. 
fighting for what's right. As an offspring of this whole scenario, there would be an ununderstood backlash of people fighting against the people fighting for equality. All of this uproar and outrage continues to reinforce my point that the United Kingdom is not united. And to what seems unbelievable at this point, the separation and divide would continue to grow in the years to follow. Parties that the, the government, the people in charge were breaking the rules, having these parties in their lovely gardens. I think I've been naive all my life. It's not till now I just go, why do we trust them? Of course we shouldn't trust the people in charge. That's how they're in charge. They shouldn't be trusted. <laughs> people of the country had now fully lost belief and trust in the government. As scandal after scandal would hit the news. This led to Boris Johnson's resignation. And I want you to know how sad I am to be giving up the best job in the world. By this point, lockdowns and COVID were virtually non-existent within the UK, with life and the country overall starting to improve. But the new Prime Minister, Liz Truss, would have a dramatic start to her new job. Within the past few minutes, Buckingham Palace has announced the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. With the passing of the Queen, the country was once again divided over something else, whether we should keep the monarchy or abolish the monarchy. This bombshell of a start would truly set the tone for the rest of the time Liz Truss was in office. One of the first things Liz Truss would do is introduce a mini budget alongside tax cuts, which would see the Great British Pound hit its lowest level ever against the US dollar. She would lose the trust of her own party whilst plunging the country into a recession. As a result of this, the 2008 crash, Brexit, COVID, protests in China, and the war in Ukraine, everything in the UK would increase in price, forming what we now know as the cost of living crisis. Frontline services going on strike, ambulance staff, nurses, Royal Mail workers, teachers, university staff, bus drivers, baggage handlers and driving examiners are all downing tools at some point this winter. Despite affecting everyone, the lower and middle class would take the brunt of this. Going into 2023, this is still very current. People are suffering. People are struggling to heat their homes. People are struggling to afford basic necessities. Homelessness has increased. Debts have increased. And the demand for food banks have increased. The price of Tesco meal deals have increased. After collapsing everything in the country, from the economy to people's savings to her own government, Liz Truss would resign after 45 days. I am resigning. But the damage was already done. She highlighted and further separated the rich from the poor. The rich have become richer and the poor have become poorer. This divide has truly sealed the deal and finally lets me conclude my point of which the United Kingdom is actually ununited. The country is filled with divide, most of which has been stimulated in the last decade or so. Divided on which way to vote, divided on Scottish independence, divided on Brexit, divided on whether to trust the government, divided on how the government were handling Covid, divided on racial inequality, divided on Britain keeping the monarchy, and divided heavily on class. The list goes on. Taking all of this into consideration, can you really call this kingdom united? Let me know what you think in the comments. This is one of my first videos, so to grow with me on the channel and see similar content in the future, I would recommend subscribing.